Hello, everybody. I am blocking you from drinking. Okay. <clears throat> oh, okay. Thank you, Timothy. All right. So uh, a few things. Um, I'm going to go over uh, two basic ideas. Uh, the first is this uh, word computation. Uh, a few years ago, I talked about there's three kinds of design. There is classical design, design like this jacket. There is design thinking that involves post-it notes and Sharpies. And then there is computational design, sort of like Instagram-style design, product design. And um, people would always ask me, what is computation? And I was like, oh, I should explain that. So uh, I have a new book coming out that focuses on that. The second thing is um, this uh, acronym CX. I've thought about it a lot. I've been engaging a lot. And I wondered, like, what is the basis uh, of a computational experience? Like, what are the four key ingredients of it? Do they exist? And so I've been searching for the last 10 years for them. And um, I uh, got this job offer to work at Publicis Sapient. And uh, before I accepted, I flew out to Cannes. You know Cannes, the fancy like beach area thing. And uh, I was in the uh, back seat of an Uber with my new boss, Nigel Vass, the CEO. And you know we're still getting to know each other, but you know it's 11 p.m., a little bit awkward. Evening, we're tired. And he says, "So, what's the key to a great experience?" And I said, "Well, I got two of them figured out." And maybe by the time I join, the two other will have arrived. So I'm happy to give you what's come out of the toaster. OK? Ready? Good? OK. All right. So why are the four ingredients important? It's because computation is so confusing. Who has seen Stranger Things? Stranger Things? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, OK, good. Um, you know that upside down world, that like weird world that's like strange, like David Bowie style? So, I think computation is that world. It's invisible, it's magical, it's frightening, it's multidimensional. Um, and that upside down world is powering this gigantic infinite surface of interaction that we sort of take for granted in any given moment. And super hard to understand. So how do you make a good experience when people tell you to make something amazing? Wow me kind of thing. It's kind of hard, isn't it? Who's having a hard time making a wow experience happen? Raise your hand. Come on, it's a little bit hard. We've been wowed a lot. So instead of a wow experience, how do you make a, a good experience? It turns out that the technology companies today are the best at making wow experiences. Super good at using computation. They're great at making things light and fast. They're great at making things that are actually ethically minded in how data is thought out in AI. They're great at making things easy to use. Like, who remembers in the 1984, sort of dating myself, um, the slogan was, a computer for the rest of us. Remember that? That was a radical idea, that a computer for nerds could somehow be useful to everyone. Apple made things super accessible. And lastly, Dataful. This is a, a word we're playing with right now. Thank you, August, for putting it out there on the internet. But um, dataful is an important word because um, we love the word beautiful so much. Like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful, the, 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 the countdown clock. But what if there was a world was like, that's so dataful, the countdown clock? It's so dataful, isn't it? It's fantastically dataful. So dataful, could it be like a good word versus like a uh, word? is the question. And you know who's good at Dataful? Amazon's awfully good at Dataful. OK. So if you ask yourself, like, how does this fit in together into a human-centered world, um, it's fairly simple and complex. It's the fact that everything is Dataful now, if you accept computation. But if everything is Dataful, we have disturbances in the force. On the other hand, Dataful makes things easier to use, significantly accessible. But on the other hand, Data makes us ask ethical questions about where's the data from. Meanwhile, the cloud demands high performance, high speed experiences. They have to be light. You won't wait for it to happen. So if you think about simple definitions, and these came from the team in Tokyo at Publicis Sapient. Uh, our team like, put this together very quickly, and we're using this. But light is basically about fast. Everyone loves fast. McDonald's makes hamburgers super fast. 
That's how we fell in love with that. Um, ethical, super important, specifically for the new generation that notices the earth is kind of dying and bad stuff is happening. Good, we have to listen. So we have to ask, ask questions about, is this product ethical, not just the story itself? Thirdly, we've heard a lot about inclusive design, accessibility, but also the, the financial opportunity of asking questions about increasing the total addressable market, a very nice VC word, TAM, remember that. And lastly, dataful. I love when we talked about the importance of research. Someone, and someone, someone was there in like three sessions ago about asking, <coughs> How does research become valued in an organization when it seems like irrelevant, but so essential to doing the right thing? So an um, easy way to think about the four ingredients is when you flip them. You know Shazam, this comic book hero? Story goes like, you know, Billy Batson goes in this like cave with like the bad stuff, like evil type of stuff. So if you flip the four ingredients, it gets quite interesting. Uh, heavy. It's, uh, it takes forever to load. It's super, it's, it's super bloated. Not good. Unethical. It's kind of corrupt and evil. Sounds not good. Inaccessible. No matter how hard you try, you'll never figure it out. Ha 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 ha. And <laughs> number four. Dataless. Like, it came from the gut. It's going to be right. Let's bet on it kind of thing. Right? Used to be a good idea. Okay. Um, now, how does this... How do those four negative uh, characteristics get solved? They get solved by the magic of computation. And computation is not just code. It's harnessing the power of that upside-down world. And anyone in Silicon Valley knows exactly what I'm talking about. And anyone who has no idea what I'm talking about has to figure it out. Because if you don't figure it out, you will not make great experiences. You know, Tad Tullos over there at Sonos. I serve on the board of Sonos. Um, Tad is someone who understands everything from the mechanical to the electrical to the computational. And therefore, it's possible to do impossible things. Like, when we think about one of our clients, Carrefour, um, the light, ethically accessible data full, using this ingredient framework, we looked at it, and I was like, wow, here we have it. But the reality is that to be light, it's an engineering characteristic. It's about the technology in many senses. You have to get it right. On the ethical side, you have to ask supply chain questions. You have to get in the, in, in the dirty details of how something is happening. Same with accessible and dataful. And so you have to understand how computation works to eke out the magic, how to go to Shazam's cave and figure things out. Now, why do you want to do that? It's because in the old days, the good old days of like, you go and shop, and you buy it, and you're done. There's no engagement loop. It was like, come, can I eat this donut? It's amazing. I think it's cool. I think it's good. You buy it, and you ate it, you're done. But as you know, instead, we're in a super engagement loop. <laughs> Previous World is about wowing you. My friend at, at Muji talks about how at Muji, they design not for the wow, but for the after wow. Or in Japanese, the after wow. I was like, what's the after wow? And he was like, it's super easy. You go and buy the thing, you bring it home, you live with it for a month, you look at it and like, wow. So the after wow is the product engagement loop, essentially, the ownership experience. Whereas we think the wow has to live in the buyership experience. Wow, buy me, it's going to be amazing. And you don't have to do it anymore because of computation because computation sits in an infinite loop, and it can work and gauge the customer in either an unethical engagement, awkward, bad product experience, or a good one, all powered by computation. Now, that's why a lot of work that I'm thinking about today is being able to help more people understand computation. So this book comes out next month. It's called How to Speak Machine, Computational Thinking for the Rest of Us, and it's essentially uh, three chapters that explain David Bowie's upside-down world of computation. I bring up David Bowie, David Bowie because if you Google David Bowie 1999 BBC interview, he's asked by the interviewer, so what is this internet thing? You know, isn't it just a tool? And Bowie says, it's an alien life form. So he gets it so right. It's a weird material. 
Uh, and secondly, if you accept alien life form, you have to build products differently. So it's three short chapters about the, about the material and three short chapters about how the products have changed. This is something that you all know, but it's meant for people who have no idea what has happened because of computation. OK, thank you. I'm on time, 10 minutes. <laughs> Thanks, John. That was great. All right, so I have the first question I want to start off by asking you is uh, maybe a little crazy, but I, I accept your, your point, your premise, that it's important for all of us to learn how to speak machine, including CX pros, because it's so important uh, to experience. But should CX pros just throw in the towel? I mean, why not just leave it to the engineers and to the technologists? Since they already know how to speak machine, let them create the experiences. I think that's what's happening now, mm -hmm. right now. And look, look what's happening. It's not too great. <laughs> and I think that more humanists have to accept the fact that they will have to learn computation. Um, not saying coding, per se. If you just understand the gist of what computation is about, you actually realize, this is pretty powerful. This is pretty scary. That's why you and I, we have a similar bond, because we're both originally started as coders, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so do you think that it's one of those things where, well, what do CX pros bring to the equation then that the engineers and the software engineers don't have? I mean, what's the, what's the dynamic collaboration that's so important? Uh, I'm going to, I hope not to insult anybody. I'm an engineer as well. But um, the terrible thing that I learned as an MIT trained engineer is I learned how to make anything, but I didn't know what to make. Uh -huh. And I think that people who don't come from the background come from a knowing of what to make uh, have to get involved right now. So, um, and by the way, before I ask my next question, I want to point out that you can ask questions as well. In a few moments, I'll open it up. We have some folks with microphones running around. So if you have some thoughts and things you'd like to ask John, jot them down, and we'll open it up uh, in a few minutes. We have eight minutes, 16 seconds. <laughs> so um, you talked about ethical, the second element in that yes. list of four. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Whose ethics? Thank you for asking that question, because it's a question of the fact that so many of us have different ethical models. And that's why even in the example we've seen uh, recently with the shoe shop, like everyone is different. Everyone is different. And then you have to accept the fact that you have to listen to everyone. Mm -hmm. People say that's impossible, but you got to try. Like, for instance, uh, when I was at Automatic, I went to visit um, uh, Detroit. Uh, coffee shops in Detroit, working with shop owners there. And then after I began watching the TV and we had this new, are you American? You're, we're American, right? And basically, I'm a bit of a cultural mutt. But yeah. okay. So, you know, we have this president in America right now. And it's just really super interesting. And so I went to Kentucky, yeah. to uh, a coal mining country, mm -hmm. to meet folks from that area. And so just listening to everyone's point of view is so key because then you can triangulate mm -hmm. solutions. So listening is so key when you engage the ethical question. Mm -hmm. To understand where each of the users you're talking to is coming from to design experiences that work for them? or Well, just to kind of like get slap yourself in the face, uh -huh. because I think that we think we're so smart all the time. At least I have that problem. I'm sure I'm like, oh my God, oh, I'm so stupid all the time. Um, I remember I was talking to a group of uh, high school students from mm -hmm. different public schools um, in Detroit. And, you know, I'm trying to like be this sort of like cool older person. Yeah, well, you know, like when I was younger, you know, kind of thing, and like, you know, and, you know, we have these desktop computers, but, you know, all of you have one of these, you know, raise your hand if you have one of these, and like half the kids aren't raising their hands. And just realizing my, my view of how the world is yeah. is not correct. Right. You're living in a bubble. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, let's open it up to questions from the audience. Is there anybody who would like to ask John a question? can't see very well, so raise your hand high. Six minutes, Question. eight seconds. <laughs> yes, right here. Somebody is coming with a microphone for you. Oh, I'm just curious, how are you defining computational? Ah, OK, that's super simple. This will avoid, this will require you not to buy the book. Ready? Here he goes. <laughs> uh, OK, so, so computation. Uh, as a material, has three properties that are unnatural. Okay. Um, the first is 
it can loop forever. It never gets tired. This is unusual. You start a loop, it just keeps on going. My hand will get tired eventually. You'll see it stop. Um, but a com computer never gets tired. That's weird. Number two. Um, like for example, like most people think like, oh, I'm really ticked off at the cable company. I'm going to be on the I'm going to be on the phone tree. I'm going to show them by being on here for an hour. Yeah, good luck, because the computation never gets tired. The second thing is that computation can model infinitely large systems and infinitesimally detailed systems at the same time. At the exact same time, it can go ten to the minus whatever and to the, ten to the plus whatever. Um, uh, the thing we often say is impossible is to find a needle in a haystack. But a computer is like, no problem. I'll find that needle in every haystack on Earth. That is unnatural. The third property is that computation is the one material that can model living systems, whether physically living or cognitively living. That is not a normal thing. Yet we've accepted the fact that there's a material that does this and it's working in a completely invisible way. And if you accept that computation exists, that's how the second part of the book, um, is it changes products in three profound ways. You want to hear that? Anyone want a different question? OK, good. All right, so, uh, so again, looping large living systems. Um, it changes products in three ways that are super obvious to all of you because you're in the tech industry, but it's super hard for anyone who makes regular things, like makes pencils and puts them in boxes and ships them, or makes donuts, fries them, ships them, etc. It changes products in three ways in that, and actually Tad, Tad mentioned this when he was talking about uh, Sonos hardware software, is for the first time in history, uh, a good design is defined by how incomplete it is. That's kind of weird. It's like you're supposed to actually do it the right way, make it complete. Make sure you get it right, because if you get it wrong, you'll ship it, and you'll pay the penalty of returns, etc. You, you carry too much inventory. All kind of bad things happen. But if you accept the fact that the computation material is different, incomplete is the new perfect. And that's strange. The second thing that is unusual, if you accept that we make products out of this material, is that we now make products that are instrumented, which is also unusual. Because to instrument something used to cost a lot of money. Remember there was all that stuff about airplanes and people bugging, like, you know, business class, you know, first class seats, were like, oh my gosh, you know, here's the corporate or espionage or whatever. Um, that was expensive. Um, but as you know, you just like add a listener, add whatever. It's like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what's happening. Um, that's weird. Uh, but that's normal. Um, the third way products have changed is we have to ask questions about if we're deploying to millions of people, and we can deploy incomplete, and we can deploy with marginal cost zero, no penalty, if we make a mistake, we will generate imbalance across the world so easily. And this piece here is a piece that the younger generation is keying on in so easily and quickly they're not just digital natives, they're like digital beings. And they're saying a lot to us right now that the world's getting imbalanced. Hey, look, check it out, not good, you know? Um, so those three ways products have changed and we have to pay attention because of computation. Okay, that's the whole book, you're done. All set. <laughs> Sorry, publisher. Okay. All right, we have another question in the front row here. There is a great challenge in like, physical stores to create a great experience in different industries, let's say banking, insurance, or retail. And how can computation help transform this experience in the physical stores? Well, um, I personally look to, bad example I know, but to China. Because China has figured this out in many ways, in ways that push the envelope of ethics. Like, have you seen like the Starbucks flagship store? I mean, it's like, whoa, there's supers video monitoring for everything. Is this okay? I'm not sure. There's IoT devices to monitor everything. Is that okay? Um, it enables a dataful experience, like almost too dataful. Um, 
And so I'm looking at China and how do you dial it down? How do you up the ethics? Uh, because all the cues are coming from the market. Why? A simple system dynamic is occurring. Um, you know, in China, there's no uh, websites. It's very rare to have a website, right? Because the websites aren't a, aren't a thing. Uh, WeChat, so Messenger-like so, like, like, like systems are the, are the replacement for a web browser. So what's happened is that the channel owns all the data. So there's super ingenuity in China, as you know. So the call is made. Hey, wait a second. If we can't control data online, let's control data offline. So that's where I look for cues right now. Again, not to be like that, like, sorry, that bad. But uh, what's, 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 what's that innovations are so interesting. Well, unfortunately, we have run out of time for the discussion here. However, we have an opportunity to continue the conversation. John, would you be up for that next door over cocktails? Of course, David. Yeah? OK. <laughs> I love awesome. David. Thank okay. you, John. I appreciate it. Thank you.